Merhaba. So it's Turkish salute. You know, it's merhaba. It's easy for you to respond. Let me try again, and you respond back, okay? Uh, merhaba. 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 That's good. <laughs> nice to be with you again. It's great to be with you. And I have seen, uh, I had seen some of you, and I don't remember all of the names. Sorry about that. So my memory goes bad, especially when I think about the names. But it's, again, great to be here and able to talk to you. So I brought this time my whole family with me. Uh, I don't know if you remember uh, my wife, Pervin, and uh, my, our son, Elijah and Birje, if you can stand up. You know, they can see you. So, the sad part of uh, sad story is that my wife Pervin just heard uh, her father passing away, passed away uh, last night. So, uh, it's sad. Uh, she already had a chance to go and see him and say goodbye to him before we came because we didn't know what was going to happen with him. He was in the hospital and, you know, at home and, you know, struggling with cancer. So we got the news last night. So we are kind of grieving uh, today, uh, right now. So, but we trust the Lord. And, and, you know, let me tell you a little bit. I don't know if you remember my testimony I shared a couple of years ago. So, like, uh, I got saved. I'm coming from a Muslim background. My wife, my family, as my wife as well. So, like, uh, a couple of years ago, he had a problem with his one of his legs. So, he, he, it was hurting so much. So, he came to the church for prayer. And then the next day, he came again with his wife. And then the wife had a, you know, very big pain in his head, like migraine. Look, like we, we just said, okay, let us pray for you. And we prayed for her. She, in, in, when she closed her eyes, just we were praying for her. And she suddenly began crying. Her tears were coming from her eyes. And her hands were going up like that. And we just stopped her and said, what's going on? She says, I see Jesus on the cross. And he's, he's just, his eyes are just staring at me, staring, like looking at, at my eyes. So we got so excited and we said, okay, it is time for you to, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We said, she says, yes, of course I'll do, of course I'll do. And she received the prayer that time and she confessed that Jesus is her Lord and her Savior. We were so happy. We just went back to the uh, to the her father and we said father do you see what's happening here you know you, you just need to accept christ as well and we will pray for your leg too he says you don't need to pray for my leg my leg is already healed i don't feel any pain she just he just stood up he just stood up and jumped up and down he was healed and he received prayer as well i don't know what's happened during you know after that because we were far away like we were distanced, but you know, but my wife had to go many times, and like she was there last time, and she offered again that him he accept Christ as her Lord and his Lord and Savior, but he was resistant this time. So, so you know, we trust the Lord, and we trust that He is in God. He is, he is uh, my father-in-law in God's hand, and He is taking care of care of Him. So uh, I, I will start my message. My message tonight is about prayer. So before I start, I, I just need to ask you a favor. If you all can pray together uh, for her and for the soul of the Father, spirit of the Father, and also for the whole family that, you know, doing the burial uh, at this maybe in this uh, few hours, okay? Thank you, Father. We come before you, and I thank you for this precious family, uh, and I thank you for their uh, openness and their heart uh, that they have for you uh, and for us Turks and Turkey. And we bring up this time to your hand, 
and we all pray about Pervin's father, father Ihsan, and you just have be you just be merciful to his soul and spirit, and we just lift up the whole family into your hands. You be also uh, merciful to them, give them comfort, and give them peace. And I just lift up this time to your hands and you speak through your Holy Spirit into our hearts so that we can learn from you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So I'm coming from Muslim background. So I, the, of course, I believed in a God. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't very strong, very conservative Muslim. For example, conservative Muslims do pray five times a day, fast during the Ramadan. By the way, this is the Ramadan months for them. They are, pray, they are fasting in, in whole month. And then I didn't, of course, go to Makkah. And I wasn't practicing all those things. But in my heart, I was believing that if I'm a good man, only a good man, and doing good, and doing the good things in my eyes, and bless the community I am living in. God will bless me and give me a place in His heaven. That was what I was believing. So she came one day, and she, my wife came to me and told me about Jesus. I, I, I was resistant at the beginning, but she got into, you know, like she got into my mind, and then a few months after that, I got saved. So I'm so much thankful for her. And, and, and like so many Turks in Turkey today believe the same thing. Like they don't need to do so many things in order to please God. They do, of course, in the Muslim practices, they do so many practices. But they think that if they have only those practices done, like if they pray five times a day, and if they fast during the Ramadan, and if they follow other rules that are written in the Quran and told them by the Prophet Muhammad, their Prophet Muhammad, they think that, they think that it's going to be all right for them. I was believing in the same thing, but after I became a Christian, after I got to know Jesus, I learned that relationship is more important than those practices in my faith. And I realized that God looks at my relationship to Him more than the things that I do for Him. It changed, it changed me, and it changed my understanding of God and my understanding of salvation, of course. This is how I saw in the Bible. I saw that God created man to have relationship with Him. Right? When we look at Adam, for example, and Eve, when he created them, he put them in a garden, and he was coming to see them in the, in, during the evening hours and spending time with them and talking to them. And in, in Leviticus also, it says that I will walk. I don't know. We had slides. It's not coming up. I feel much more free if we don't have anything there. So I feel, I feel better that, that way. In Leviticus, for example, 26, 12, it says that God says that I will walk among you like he did in Garden of Eden and be your God and you shall be my people. He was a God that looking for relationship. He created Adam and Eve for relationship. When we come to Jesus, we see, this, we see the same thing in Jesus. God's hands created Adam and Eve. And Jesus himself picked each disciple one by one for relationship with him. He picked each one of them. He spent time with them. He taught them. He slept with them, I mean, in the same place. He ate with them. He, he, he ministered with them. He ministered to them. And he, he taught them how to minister to others. 
And he gave them the authority. Said, you go, preach the gospel in my name. Remember the story? He sent those seventies to cast out demons, heal the sick. They go out and they came back. They were so happy. Oh, Jesus, in, the, in your name we prayed and we saw demons cast, being casting out and we see sick being healed. And he died for them. And he was raised from dead, from dead for them. We saw them being changed so much. I just want to ask you, picture them when they had first met Jesus at the beginning and, and after, after Jesus' resurrection, how much they were changed. Like at the beginning, when they started their relationship with Jesus, remember, on the boat, in a storm, boat is shaking, you know, it's just waves, and, you know, they are thinking that they are going to die. They are just, you know, just, you know, asking Jesus, Jesus, the master, wake up, we are dying. He wakes up. And calms the storm, remember? What do they tell to each other? Who is this man? Who is this man that can say stop? And even the waves and the, uh, what? What is that? Wings and everything stops and obeys him. When they started that relationship with Jesus, they were not sure of him. Who is this guy? Where do they, where his, where does, help me with my English. Where does he get this authority? Is it good English now? And what is our place in his eyes? What is he going to do with me? What am I going to be doing if he becomes the king or if he becomes successful? Where am I going to be in his authority, in his life? They weren't sure of Jesus and they weren't sure of themselves in the eyes, eye of Jesus. Does it make sense? But they spend that time together. And after they spend all those times together, not only because of the miracles that they have seen in Jesus, what Jesus had done with them and with all around them, because of the relationship that they had with Jesus, they worshipped him. Remember Thomas? He sees Jesus after the resurrection and he just bells down before him and says, you are my, my Lord and my God. Jesus called all of us for this type of relationship. He called each one of us. He called me from a Muslim family. He called my wife 23 years ago from a, from a Muslim family. He called you from wherever you were and called you and said, my son, my daughter, come and follow me. And we don't think, let us not think that he has called us just to be part of a church or just to go to a building regularly or just have a cross, biggest cross, or just have a sticker behind our car or watch Christian TV channels or watch Christian 
Christian mo movies or listen to Christian music or even not minister in a church. He didn't call us for any of this. He called us for a relationship with him. A relationship that, that will transform us and change us. When I, look at, when I look at the disciples, this is how I see. This is what I see. Like they were ordinary men, fishermen, farmers, ordinary people in their community. But through the relationship that they had with Jesus, they were transformed and changed. They already had works in the community that they were doing. Some of them were fishermen, some of them were farmers. But Jesus made them ministers. They were already talking to people. They were speaking to people, of course. But Jesus put power in their speech. They already have ordinary life. But Jesus transformed their life and made them, what is the word, world changers. They changed the whole world. They made the whole world upside down. This is what I believe Jesus wants to do in us and with us. And that will happen only and only through relationship with Jesus Christ. Are we in the same page? Am I doing okay? Let me check time because Bruce warned me. <laughs> what time the service ends? Like six o'clock or seven? <laughs> Ten? Okay. Like when I was, when I, before I came to Christ, like I was, of course, in a Muslim, Muslim uh, religion. You know, prayer is important. You know, they pray five times a day. Like it's like they spend, like just say their prayers just depends on uh, your mood. You know, it's, it depends on your mood. It's usually you can do, you can complete their regular prayer time within 10 minutes. So it's, but it depends on your, your mood. If you are rushing, you can do it in two minutes. And if, if you are not rushing and you, can, you are lazy a little bit that day, it can take like half an hour or let, even more than that. Even, you, know, it's, you can stay in the mosque you know, as much as you want. But, it's, but, but, but to me, when I look at that experience, they, they, it had no, no, no soul in it. It was just when, I don't know if you are familiar with Muslim prayers are only the words that memorized from the Quran, and when you go and, and bow down before Allah, you just, prep, you just repeat the same words and again and again, you know, five times a day. It's, this is how, how they do it. It didn't, make, it didn't make sense to me. I didn't like it, but with Christ, when I'm talking about the relationship, I realized that for the, for in order to have a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ, I should pray. Prayer is the way for relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm saying the way for relationship, friendship with Jesus Christ. I heard other people, like I heard, of course, you can say that we have worship, we, can, we have reading the Bible, we have other things that our attitude, we have other things that kind of builds up our relationship with Jesus. I agree with it. But prayer is the way for that relationship, for that friendship. Every other things that we do in our lives, like worshiping, reading the Bible, like doing, going out and outreach, they all have a meaning, a message for Jesus. 
Jesus looks at those things and gets something about us. Says that, Ali, you are a good man. See, I see how you spend your time, how, how you spend your money, and how you read your Bible, and how much you are committed. These are so meaningful to me. This is what he says. But when I pray for him, he listens to me. He hears me, and he responds to me. Please let us not forget the transformation that done in disciples' life was done through that relationship with Jesus Christ. Today, the transformation in my life and in all of our life can be done only, only through meaningful prayer life, meaningful prayer Thank you. <laughs> well, I would like to see the second slide. What is that? Okay, it's coming up. That's the verse that we have. But when we talk about the prayer, I would like to say something about something about very important. I think because of the because of the uh, because of the change in Christianity. Because of the reformation in Christianity, we forgot the essence of prayer. Like we forgot how important it is. And we forgot the value of the quantity of the prayer. Now, after that, people start focusing on the quality but forgetting about the quantity. But for, in order to have a real good relationship with Jesus Christ and have a quality prayer life, I believe that we should also have quantity in our prayer lives. Quality is kind of the power and influence of our prayers. So for example, if we pray and if we see that, if we feel that God is there and listening, if we sense His presence over there, if we, say, if we sense that He is there, He is talking to us, and He is hearing us, He is touching us, we can touch to Him, and He is there for us, we know that that's the quality of prayer because He is there. We will love that because we can be transformed through only that relationship, only through that kind of prayer life. But in order to get there, we also should have quantity in our prayer lives. What I mean by quantity, how much do we pray when we pray? How many times in a week we pray? How do we do it? I think this is very important. I think we lost it. I think we don't value the quantity anymore. We, in the materialistic world, like, I would like to uh, drive a Mercedes. That's the best quality car. I would like to eat, eat this organic food. They are the quality food. I would like to dress this brand because that's quality material and everything. We kind of treat the spirituality. We kind of see our prayer life the same way. I don't want to spend hours and hours in prayer. I would like to pray five minutes and get it done. This is the attitude we might have, we have. But in order to have that quality prayer life, we should have quantity. And the quantity is in the Bible. Like when we talk, Bruce, you need to remind me about time, brother. How, how many more minutes do I have? Yeah. Eight minutes. Oh, okay. I need to rush. Okay, thank you. That's better. That's better. For example, when we look at the first Thessalonians 5.17, says that pray continuously. And when we talk to Colossians 4.2, says that devote yourself to prayer. When we look at Luke 6, 
Luke actually 18, 1 and 8, someone, a widow comes and goes to a judge who is ungodly and, you know, doesn't love people and begs him and he doesn't, he doesn't give the things that the, the widow wants, but at the end she does it again and again and again and again and again and again. And that person, that judge comes and says that, okay, you are granted. Go and, go and get what you want. And Jesus encourages us that we have to pray like her, day and night. We should push for what we want. When we look at the, some biblical characters like David in Psalm 55, it says that evening, morning, and noon, I cried out in distress, and he hears my voice. And when we look at Daniel, for example, he went into his house and his window being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God and as he did it before. Peter, according to Acts 10, 9, kind of goes to the, goes to the temple, goes to synagogue, uh, synagogue and prays there and in the context we see that kind of this is what he has had doing regularly. I don't know how your prayer life is. I hope you do have a quality prayer life. When you pray, when you go before the Lord, when you opened up your mouth or even in your heart, when you prayed, you feel His presence is there. He's there, He's listening, and He's ready to touch you. He's ready to change you. He's ready to give you what you want. He's ready to, 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 to work with you, minister to you, and minister to others through you. I hope you got this type of prayer life. Because this type of prayer life will change you. And only this type of prayer life will change you. And this type of prayer will change not only you, but your family, your community. And this type of prayer will give you a ministry. And give you success in that ministry. And this type of prayer will make your life very meaningful. I hope you have it. If you don't have it, I suggest instead of just focusing on the quality, you first focus on quantity. If you are not doing it, try to go before the Lord every day. If you cannot do it, a good friend of ours, for example, she spent a whole day with the Lord. She, she called it God's day. She fasted. She turned off her TV, off cell phone, and everything. She spent whole day with God in her room. She went out only for bathroom. She didn't eat anything. Start with quantity. Go before the Lord every day. And just don't go just for five minutes. Try to stay in His presence 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. Add Bible reading into it. And then if you have hard time to, to find out what you need to pray for, just ask to people in the church, how can I pray for you this week? They will give you many things that you can pray for. Just watch the news for a day. Or just open the newspaper for Monday morning, for example. You will get whole many subjects that you will pray for that week. And pray every day. then you will see the quality coming into your prayer life. Does it make sense? I hope it does.
then you will have your mission in God. God will tell you what He wants you to do in His kingdom. And then He will talk to you about your family. He will tell you what needs to be changed in your family. Then He will tell you about yourself, what needs to be different in your life. Then He will tell to you about your community, what needs to be done in your community, and how can do it. What is your part in that? We are talking about prayer, and let's pray. My wife and I, my wife may not, but I will be available after the service. If you like to come up, and I would like to have quantity, but I cannot with so many people coming up, I would like to have a quality prayer, short quality prayer with you and pray for you if you especially like me to pray for this subject. Uh, okay, let's pray. Let's go before the Lord and ask Him. Father, we come before you. And I thank you for each person in this room, Father. You choose them specifically. You choose each one of them, one by one. And you have a special plan for each one of them in every age. And you are, and you are, you are able to do it. Thank you for the word that you have given to us. Let us be the people of prayer. Let this church be the church of prayer. I ask your Holy Spirit to help us when we go before you. Let us stay more before you. Remind us the things that you want us to pray. Talk to us. Give us ears that listen, listens. Give us eyes that can see. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray.